The mental health crisis has been in the headlines a lot this year, affecting not only adults, but also teens and children. Thankfully, more and more resources have become available connecting patients to help. But there's also treatment, and there's one type that's been proven to help with depression and other types of anxiety. Bridget Ellison is standing by now to ask a doctor. Ask a Doctor is sponsored by Conviva Primary Care for Seniors. So today we're talking about ketamine. It's been around since the 60s. It's been used in medical procedures around the world. Here now to talk about this latest advancement in treatment options and benefits, Dr. Matthew Angelelli. He is the Director of Behavioral Health for Orlando Health. And thanks for stopping in. I know you're busy. Um, we've been talking about the mental health crisis for years now. Um, is it encouraging to see that, you know, more attention is being brought to this? It's been it an is, issue. It is being, it is helpful to bring more attention. We're getting more uh, support. We're getting, uh, we're able to expand services. It's been a good thing. Are you seeing a big uptick in, you know, patients coming in, people reaching out? Uh, we have been. Uh, life has been stressful through COVID and people that we used to not see who would be able to manage the level of stress in, in the world, uh, that the stress is going up. So we're seeing a group of people we used to not see. Mm -hmm. What's your overall advice for people when it comes to mental health management? Should we be looking at this along the lines of, you know, annual physicals and, you know, people going in to get those other exams they get every year? Is this a, a thing we should check in with more regularly? Uh, without a doubt. I think that uh, people should see their eye doctor, see their dermatologist, and see their psychiatrist at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Get a right. checkup. Well, let's talk about ketamine because, you know, there are different ranges of therapy and so many options out there. Where does this fall in line with different levels of care? Well, it's, a, it's, a new, it's, it's an old medicine with a new purpose. And mm -hmm. so we found that it helps with uh, suicidal depression. And so it's a very severe type of depression. This is not something that the average person who struggles with a mild to moderate depression mm -hmm. would use. So this is more like along the lines of an intervention level. This is like for more severe when things haven't been, other things haven't been working or? Th that's correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, when people are struggling with severe depression, uh, if you give them medicine, the first third uh, or a third of people will respond to the first medicine. Another third will respond to the second medicine. After that, response is difficult to get. Uh, I see a lot of people who have had 10 or 15 trials, and that's where ketamine can come in. I was reading up on how this all came about, and it was uh, partially with some clinical trials, but other times given to people who had maybe been uh, rescued in a, a suicidal situation and given something like that, and it, it had a longer-term effect than anticipated. It did. Uh, so we stumbled upon this, and then people did research on this. And uh, usually, uh, people that are depressed, we start giving them medications. Again, many will respond to the medicine, some don't. And uh, when ketamine was given, uh, it was noted that in a day, they were better, and the suicidal uh, thoughts were gone. Um, the effect wore off in seven days, and so there was a lot of research done, and the Ketamine uh, was given twice a week uh, for four weeks, and then they found a more uh, permanent response. And then some people just need some maintenance that maybe every two to four weeks get another dose. So what does that look like? I, I saw something about IVs. I saw something about nasal mist. So how does that break down? Right. So the initial uh, studies and use was IVs. Anesthesiologists have been using ketamine for many years. And... Uh, it was starting to be infused in outpatient centers to help people with depression. Uh, Janssen tried to figure out how they could give it differently, and uh, that's when intranasal was given, okay. and it's been helpful. And so there's a, a, some downtime with the doses before you're able to like go home, or because it is some, somewhat of a sedative, right? That's correct. Uh, so you'll go into the office. We need to check your blood pressure because it can make your blood pressure go up. Uh, you'll sit down in a chair. Um, you'll, administer, you'll be given the medicine. You don't walk in with the medicine. You'll be given the medicine. You'll uh, sh shoot uh, the medicine up in each nose, mm -hmm. uh, each nostril in your nose. And then um, you have to sit there for two hours just to make sure everything goes well. Uh, you can't drive home. And w what we recommend is that you uh, have a good night's sleep before you drive again. 
Okay. Um, one of the other things that was interesting about this is we say it's been around since the 60s in anesthesiology, but there was mm -hmm. also, I guess, th during the 90s when there was, you know, talk about different types of drugs being used in, you know, date rape and things like that. What What's the background on that? Because, I mean, drugs are misused all the time. That's correct. And we see that with fentanyl and other opioids, opioids which you guys covered. Like this. we just talked about. That's right. And so ketamine used appropriately, especially under the guidance of a qualified healthcare professional, is very safe. Uh, when uh, people abuse it, uh, it can cause a lot of very difficult results. And that's why you don't want to go buy this somewhere that's right. over the counter, because that's And you don't know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the illegal uh, ketamine comes in from uh, Mexico, right. and it's not, pharma pharmacy, uh, it's not developed by pharmacy companies. And so that's something to be aware of as well. Yes, ma'am. Any other advice in terms of people looking at their mental health care uh, regimen or, you know, things that they can, uh, steps they can take, you know, to manage that better? Uh, yes. So depression is caused by chronic stress. Uh, so start managing your stress. Pay attention to it. And um, uh, things that you can do for your depression. First thing, exercise. Moderate exercise is probably best. Uh, so exercise some. Work on your relationships with, in, uh, that are supportive to you. Get involved with your community relationships. Uh, build a network. Life is not an individual sport. It's a team event. That's right. No man's an island. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Angelelli, mm -hmm. for coming with that information. So it's always helpful to get some new information out there. I'll send it back to you ladies.